Howdy, friends. I have a piece of scripture I want to share with you today. Uh, I used using what my, uh, one of my professors used to call the serendipity method, where you just open it up, put your finger down. Um, this is a familiar passage, so randomly, we're just going to go with it. I'll just trust that somehow the Holy Spirit's helping me out on this one. But it's one you'll recognize uh, that seems to be very apt these days. So this is from Jeremiah 31, uh, 31 through 34. It says, The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of Egypt, a covenant that they broke, though I was their partner, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord. For I will forgive them their iniquity and remember their sin no more. This is an, uh, a passage of hope, of familiarity, I think, to a lot of us. There's this idea through a lot of the Hebrew Bible that there is a give and take relationship. Um, Israel promises to God, covenants with God, that they'll do something, and God says, and this is what I will do with you. And then Israel breaks the covenant time and time again. And nonetheless, God stays faithful. At the time of the writing of Jeremiah, of course, the people have been dragged off into exile. They're off in Babylon, away from their homes, their temples, everything that's familiar. Some have been sold into slavery. Some have been captured and brought as uh, servants or truly slaves in the different imperial houses of the people that took them. Their lives have been shattered and destroyed. And the word of hope from the prophet is that even in the midst of swirling chaos and tragedy, of the upending of your way of life, God's presence is still there. And not only is God's presence still there, that the presence of God offers something much more than your brain can even consume, and much more than your brain can even understand that in spite of all of our shortcomings and our failings, in spite of all of the ways that we end up being deficient in who we are called to be, God's love surrounds us and the forgiveness of God time and time again offers us a place. Not because we've earned it, not because we deserve it, but because God's love is so far beyond what we can understand that it's just not something we have to question. I recognize that if you're anything like my house, my family, my life right now, that things are just unusual. Things aren't what I'd like them to be. Life has been upended like nothing I have ever experienced in my short years on this earth. Nothing has prepared me to be your pastor in the midst of a pandemic, nor any of my colleagues. Nothing has prepared you, most likely, to ever have lived through anything like this, because none of us have lived through anything like this. But the promise of God still holds, whether we decide to be faithful people or not, whether we decide to follow the way that we have been called to or not, that in the midst of all of this, that God's love and forgiveness comes to us regardless, that we are loved and forgiven regardless. I hope on this gorgeous day that you are able to remember that no matter what, no matter where, how, when, why, what you've done, what's been done to you, anything like that, that you are deeply and immensely loved, you are forgiven. And no matter what, we will get through whatever this period of our time is into whatever is new because God's love has stamped and sealed us from the beginning and will never fail us. Talk to you all later.